Hello guys, welcome back to Current Technologies. In today's video, we will learn how to put a web view inside the fragment and then successfully handle the back press and the back stack of the web view inside our fragment. As you already know, the web view in Android application acts as a web browser. While you are browsing inside this web view, you may want to go back to uh, an earlier page to do that, you simply click the uh, back button in, on your Android device. But if the back stack of your web view is already empty, you may want to exit your application. So in today's tutorial, we will focus how to handle the back press in this case. So to achieve this, we have a very simple application contains only one activity called main activity. Let's go to the layout file of this activity. We have a text view. Please change it to a frame layout and change the width and height to match parent. Of course, we don't need this text. Just remove it and give it an ID frame layout. Come here and create a new fragment. Blank fragment. Call it web view fragment. Please uncheck this too and click finish. We will display this fragment in our activity. And this fragment will hold only our web view. So come here to the web view fragment of XML. Please remove all of this. Just add the web view. Match parent, match parent, and give it an ID web view. Now let's come here to the main activity to Java file. We want to, once we launch the app, we replace this frame layout with our fragment. So we will fragment transaction. I give it the name FT. Get support fragment manager dot begin transaction. FT dot replace. We will pass the ID of our frame layout that we want to replace. Yes, this one. And then next, the second parameter is our fragment. Web view fragment, yes. And then call ft.comments to display the fragment inside our activity. Now if we launch the app, we will see our fragment display in the main screen. Now let's come here to the web view fragment.java file to handle the web view. So first, replace this return with view object. Return the view object that we just created. And then here let's find our web view by ID. View 
view.findViewById r.id.webview and then to make our web view successfully display web pages that contain JavaScript, we need to say web view dot get settings dot set JavaScript enabled to true. Send webview dot set webview client new webview client and then we want to pass a URL to the website that we want to load inside our webview. So we say webview dot load URL and then you can give any URL you want to the website that you want to load. For me, I will choose to load Facebook. Yes, it's correct. Now it's the main part of our tutorial where we will handle the back stack of the web view. So let's say web view dot set on key listener new on key listener. Check if event dot get action equal Android dot view dot key event dot action down we have to check again if the key code equal key event dot key code back Yes, this one. Sorry, I'm taking a long time. <laughs> now let's make sure that our web view is not equal to null. So if it's not null, we should check if we can go back or not inside our web view. If our back stack is empty or not. So let's say if web view 
is can go back. We will say web view dot go back. Else we will call the main back press of our application get activity dot on back press. And then here don't forget to return true. Now only one thing remaining, which is to add an internet permission inside our Android manifest file. Yes, it's added successfully. Now let's run the app to see if it's working as expected or not. Now Facebook website is loaded. Let's click here on this forget password. Now we move to a next page inside Facebook. Let's click back and see what happened. Yes, we are back to Facebook main screen. If we click back again, we exit our app. Now, yeah, our app is working just fine. If you like this tutorial, please like and share. Also, hit subscribe to our channel and see you in the next video tutorial. Happy coding!